That's how I feel about this weekend. <laughs> I, it has been a roller coaster, you know, of emotions if you followed the passenger seat videos since I got here. Basically, I got here feeling really, really good about all the things because my horse has been just laying down runs. It's had two and a half, maybe three weeks off. Um, I guess probably two, two and a half. And just been laying down runs. Just running in the 1D and the 2D so consistently with really, you know, at big races. I get here feeling really good about it make my run and I'm like something's wrong he never tells me like he doesn't feel good until it's like exacerbated by a long drive and a stall ride or standing in a stall and and then I'll only run like half a second off but I'll feel some weakness because I'm a very feely person so half a second to me like I feel like I could eat a sandwich going around the second barrel you know it was not his typical so um Made our first run. I realized something was wrong. Took him to the vet. Did a lameness. He's got some fluid on his knees. Coffins are sore. Um, I thought it was his ankles. It's I just misunderstood. Um, is intercarpal, which is basically the, like a joint in the in the knee. Um, coffins, hocks, back. Okay. So no injuries. No actual injuries. Just like a whole lot of like inflammation, which athletes get inflammation. I've lifted weights for a really long time. I'm sore all the time. I literally hurt all the time, <laughs> right? So, um same thing with any athlete, like they're probably sore. There's no way that rope horses don't get sore. There's no way that race horses don't get sore. Probably 90% of the barrel horses here are sore <laughs> in one way or the other. That's just the game when you're an athlete. But he had some pretty extreme, he had the inflammation enough that he wasn't able to, con like, block it out, you know, that it was getting to him. So, he he's on Prevacox. When I haul long trips like this, I put him on Pre Prevacox, just a really light anti-inflammatory that's easy on his stomach. Basically, it'd be like you waking up or going to bed and popping a couple ibuprofen just to knock the edge off. Um, so, basically, the Prevacox, that's what it's for. Then... I ice everything all the time. I'm a, I'm a, I have ice boots in my freezer and my refrigerator. And so every run, every um, workout, even at home, I ice him. I have a PMF machine. Um, so we do all the therapy. We do as much as we can to keep the inflammation out. We, we feed supplements. We don't feed like a, 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 an inflammatory diet. So we are doing our best. But these horses use themselves so hard, they just tear themselves up. And so, um, his first run, I was like, it's half a second from where he should have been. Maybe, maybe a little more, but like, on a standard, he runs, you know, five, six, sevens, eights, nines, O's, just depending on, um, how good he feels that day and how, and how much lung capacity he has. Has, have I been able to ride him? Um, I haven't. He hasn't been ridden in two and a half weeks. He's had off. Um, I think I've ridden him maybe two or three times at the house. Easy, he hasn't made a run in a while. So his lung capacity is not there for a standard. I did not show up here thinking I was going to run a 1D or 2D time on a standard. Um, I thought if I run in the 3D, I'll be very proud of that. I'll throw a flare strip on him. And, you know, he's. I'm, I'm not going to ask him for his life because he literally, lung capacity-wise, doesn't have it. So, we know there's kind of an issue. We have one more run to make. Um, he's not limping. He's not anything. It's just kind of like when he really goes to use himself, he's babysitting it. And that's what I could feel. So I was like, you know, I think that he can make the run. Um, we're you know, like the fees are like $500, $200 for your RVs, $150 for your stalls. There's a lot of money involved. The average pays, Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollars. Um, so I thought I'm gonna let him pick a speed. If he gets to the second barrel and he says I can't turn and he just like goes up the fence or ducks or whatever, like it is what it is. Whatever he feels like he needs to do, 
to protect himself from injury or whatever. Like, I'm going to let him make that call and just let him pick a speed. And that's the speed we'll go. And we'll just let the chips fall where they may. So we did the AccuScope My Pulse um, therapy. He's had PMF because I have a machine, but I paid tests to do the AccuScope My Pulse two, two sessions, um, two days in a row. Then he had um, ice therapy twice a day. Prevacox, Butte. I mean, we're pulling inflammation as fast as we can pull inflammation. The thing is, he, we, he had some fluid. And the fluid does not just going to go away overnight. But the inflammation, I feel like we tried to get a lot of that um, out as much as we could. So, um, sorry. Um, he actually got faster, which I just felt like, I don't know how he did it. I didn't expect him to run faster. He never runs faster a second day. Actually, he's like the very first day that he runs, that's as fast as he's going to run that weekend. That's just how he is. Um, he, he ran two tenths faster. Almost, it was really too fast because he still ended up like at the bottom of the 3D and in, in the average, like the same. So had he run the same time or even just a tick slower, we probably would have gotten an average check, um, which would have paid the... 12, 13, 14, 15 thousand dollars. It's insane how much they pay. Um, but he ran faster, and I think that all the therapy just helped. I really, he never runs faster the second day. He for sure doesn't run faster the second day when he's sore, you know. So he did feel better, and basically, I just took him to the stall after that, uh, stripped his saddle off, everything, and then took him straight to the vet and was like, inject what you got to inject. You know, like, we've got to get this fluid off of these joints. So, um, it took probably 10 seconds to drain the fluid off his coffins and his knees. There was so much. And I realized that he paused really bad, and so a lot of the inflammation and a lot of that is probably from his own doing. But it is what it is, and he tries his freaking guts out for me, so... I don't care if he, if he does it to himself, like, we're going to take care of it. So, um, anyways, it took 10 seconds to drain fluid off coffins and knees. We injected his coffins. We injected his knees. He ha he was sore over his surgery site, um, his back surgery site. I don't think it was really a muscle soreness. I think he's probably got some nerves maybe regenerating there or something. I don't know. I don't really know. Um... We've x-rayed it. The x-rays are clean. So just, and his back may have been sore because his feet were sore because it kind of goes along with it. So injected his back, injected his outer joints of his hocks. I mean, he's going to feel a million times better, but like, it would have been really nice to know before I got here. <laughs> you know, I would like to show up at a ruby buckle and feel, feel a hundred percent, um, his, the thing is, like, his lameness vet is here at the Ruby Buckles or six hours from home. So the Ruby Buckles are every few months, and sometimes it's just easier to go to a Ruby Buckle, have Dawn do the lameness exam, and then treat him before we leave. But sometimes that means if something's been haunting Spencer, like, obviously this didn't just come up this weekend. You don't get that much fluid just from a six-hour drive. So he has been running and smoking runs out, making 1D, 2D runs with soreness that he just wouldn't tell me. And I just didn't read, you know, he hasn't, it hasn't shown up on a clock. So, and I haven't felt it as much as I felt it just now. So I'm like, mm-hmm, okay, you've, you've been hiding this from me, sir. And he just loves his job. So he just doesn't show, doesn't show me stuff like that until it's, unbearable, you know, until he's like, okay, I'm really sore. And I've, my feet hurt, my knees hurt, my back hurts, my hocks hurt, like my whole body hurts because I'm sure it started with one thing, probably his feet. And then it worked its way up and back. Cause that's usually what happens. It usually starts low and works up. I'm sure that's what happened. And I just didn't know. And he didn't offer to tell me. And that's just how he is. That's why it's, like, so important. I know people think he's, like, at the vet all the time. Like, oh, my God, he's at the vet all the time. Well, yeah, because I try to nip things in the bud because the sucker won't tell me until he's, like, in pain. I don't want him to ever be in pain. 
but he tears himself up running so hard, and then he doesn't tell me until he can't stand it anymore, and everything needs injected. Like, it would be so... He's had two weeks off, and he's this sore. It's not like he doesn't get time off, and he only makes runs at big deals now. Like, when I was trying to qualify for Corpus Christi with a WCRA, like, he would make some jackpot runs, but nothing like... No, I didn't run him more than three times a month. This horse does not make more than two or three times a month. Uh, two or three runs a month, usually. So, he's been, he's had this kind of haunting him for a while. It's been building up. But I'm glad we got it taken care of. Um, I am a little bummed. I think I showed up here, like, really confident because of how I'd been clocking. And then, and then, like, I'm checking the average yesterday and I knew, like, I just had to be a tick faster, and then I was, and I was like, oh my god, like, we probably got an average check. And I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, we were too fast. And I think I was so proud of him for just, like, powering through it. Um, and, he, like, my videos are on, probably on Instagram, and my videos are on my Facebook, so you guys are more than welcome to check those out, but... Um, I just got to the second barrel and I just sat there like, it's your call. You turn it or don't turn it. It's up to you. You know what I mean? Like he loves his first barrel. So he runs in there a million miles an hour, but even he stepped off his first barrel and it was a beautiful first barrel and the ground was a little bit weird this weekend. It was different. Um, so I didn't know if he was stepping off because the ground wasn't holding him as hard as he was running to it or if he had like some issue there well his right knee had quite a bit of fluid in it too and so did it that coffin so all of this started somewhere and it's just like moving from leg to leg and up the body and back and that's what it does so his first barrel was fixing to start taking a hit um because that right the right was probably fixing to start getting really really sore as sore as the left but um yeah, I, uh, I was so proud of him that I didn't really care that I didn't get a check. Now, obviously, this morning, I'm fixing to leave. I have a clinic to teach uh, about an hour away here in Oklahoma at noon, and so now I'm, I have time to reflect. My horse is fine. He feels fine. He ate, and he drank, and he's, he's walked down this whole weekend. You know, it's not until he really had to use himself that you could tell he was even off, um, so now I'm like, okay, I'm probably, I'm a little bit bummed that I didn't get some of that average money or round money or any of it, but like, I'm glad that we got it taken care of. We have, um, Corpus Christi in nine days. That's it. Nine days. So I don't feel like the coffin injections will take full effect for two weeks. Um, but because of all the fluid that we're on, like the knees need three days, um, the hawks need three days. The back, I like to give seven. Um, his knees or his uh, coffins, I feel like I don't get full effect for two weeks, 14 days. After five days, especially if they drain this, if they drain this much fluid off a horse, there's no way they don't feel better. Like immediately feel better. They drained so much fluid and inflammation off those joints. Um, there's no way that in five days he doesn't feel like a completely different horse, but I think he'll feel even better in 10 to 15 days. So in nine days, we make our first run at Corpus Christi and we have to be in the top 24 to make it to the performances. I don't feel like I'm taking my horse at a hundred percent just because I know how long it takes for those coffins to have full effect, but I also feel like he will feel 99.9% .9 better. And so I'm glad that we got it handled now because we worked a long time. We worked six months to qualify for Corpus Christi. Six months. And, and the Ruby buckles, you like, there's another one in two months. You know what I mean? In Vegas. So these aren't qualifying barrel races. These are, if you have the money to go, if you can cough up a thousand dollars a weekend, basically to go good for you. Um, but Corpus Christi was a big deal because I, I qualified for it and it was a six month hauling contest basically. So at least I know he's going to feel a lot better going into that. 
Anyway, so, yeah, I'm a little bummed. Um, I'm not going to lie about that. I, I felt really good when I got here. I was really excited to make my run. My first run didn't go the way I wanted. Then I found out something was wrong. My second run I was nervous about because I honestly didn't know if he was going to turn it or not. I literally left it up to him. Um, and now I'm just kind of like, mm, I hate going home without any money. It's going to be a long drive home. It's going to be a long drive home. And the fact that I have to make a really, really hard, important run in nine days, and I don't know that I'm going to be able to make a confidence-building run before then either. That's going to be a little bit of a mental struggle going into Corpus Christi for that qualifying, that first round. It's progressive. Knowing I have to be in the top 24, and I might not. This That run that I made last night, which was barely faster than the 4D, will be the last thing I remember going into the WCRA Corpus Christi with some of the toughest horses and the toughest girls going down the road right now. That mentally is going to weigh on me, and I'm going to have to either find something to go to before then and hope that it's a confidence builder, or... just, you know, show up and make my run and hope that he mentally figures out between now and then that he does feel better. Sometimes it takes a couple runs before they cognitively understand that they are not in pain anymore, especially if they have been powering through it for God knows how long he has been powering through it. Um, so, I don't know. I'm hoping I can find maybe one run to go to. I, I will leave that Monday. I'm hoping I can find a run to go to maybe Saturday. Um, so that he can have the maximum, and um, like a week, like seven full days to get over these injections. Some of them, which only take three days. Most of them only take three days to get over. But seven days at least. So that he can go make a run and see where he, where he's at. And then a day off. Um, he'll actually have... I'll leave on the 9th, but he won't make his run on the 10th. So then I'll have two days off before the 10th. That's kind of my plan. We'll see. I'll let you guys know.